What's up, people? So I just woke up, went to the trade show yesterday in New York City. Maybe, uh, maybe you were there. We didn't cross paths. I had lots of suck my Nasdaq stuff that I was giving away, considering I'm not I'm prohibited by law to actually sell suck my Nasdaq stuff. Can't say I didn't. Can't just throw it out. And if you happen to find one on the floor, you could have it. And there was a guy that looked remarkably like me that was there. It was this guy. Because I was afraid, I know that uh, once that I had that fight with Fidelity, I don't know if you know it, I told you the story. When I was in Vegas at the trade show, uh, what was that, two years ago now? I went to a, into a conference room. It was empty. And the gag was that I was giving a speech to an empty audience. That was the joke. But somehow a rumor spread that I went into the, into the Fidelity conference room while the conference was going on, took my shirt off, threw it up at the guy at the podium, screamed, suck my NASDAQ, and ran out, and, and, and security had to chase me. That's what was relayed to the guys that flew me out there from Orange County, my boy Ken Scordo. And they're like, what did you got? What did you do? So I was like, well, what? I didn't do anything. So I immediately went to security, and I was like, listen, I heard you were looking for me. And right there, they knew that I didn't do anything wrong, because why would I come back once they knew I was looking for, for, for me? So we, 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 we made everything nice, but still I'm on a list. And obviously I could have registered under any name, but I wanted to see specifically. That's why I brought a wig with me. So I go up to the desk, I'm wearing a wig, and uh, she calls over to the guy that I know, because my name was flagged. But uh, I, I had nine different aliases. I had Yuri. I had <laughs> every name I ever used in any gag I ever did. So I mean, I could have got in. And I still got in because they know who I am now. And I, I came, it was just me and a couple of my boys. Malice was there, of course. And uh, we had a good time. I met the people that I wanted to talk to. The day Trading Rockstar was there. So I was real excited to meet that guy. If you don't know about the Day Trading Rockstar, he's been doing what I wanted to do for a while. He's got a little radio station. And he just comments on the trading environment all day. He takes it a little bit more serious than I do. I'm here to have a little bit more fun, some entertainment. And uh, hell of a guy. I met him and his wife. It was a good time. I met the guys from T3 Live, nice down-to-earth guy. He's the one that made those nice calls in the Dow Jones telling us that the, there was no bottom in sight. But most importantly, what I took away from the show is that everybody's, obviously everyone's walking around in kind of a funk. Everybody's complaining about stock market, you can't make money in this, that, the other thing. But what everybody was saying was gold. Gold. I mean, we were talking to my boy Trent at GlobalFutures.com. And uh, he was saying how everyone's just been loading up on contracts, going out, and there's a, there's a, there's a buzz around that we're going to see gold at $2,000 an ounce. Now, I'm an apocalyptic kind of guy, and I think that America might have seen its better days. Of course, deep down inside, I'm hoping that I'm wrong, but I'm thinking that I'm right. And gold is your way of playing that. Because if we're going to go into the apocalypse and America's going to fall apart, gold will always retain its value. Even if we crash down, the buildings are burned, and we're riding through the, the, the country land on our horses with our swords, you're going to want to pay for something, and the barter system will come back, and people love that gold. So it will be worth something. And if you're going to believe in the apocalypse, you might want to buy some gold. Now... First of all, let's, let's talk about the market just for a second. People come into the chat room, I'm new here. Let me, let, can I learn something? I said, play the fade. And they said, play the fade, what does that mean? I said, when the market gaps up, it's an artificial way of this market trying to sucker you in with a fake buy. You look, you get, they try to excite you, okay? Let me, let, me, let me put something else on, hold on a second. They try to excite you, right? by gapping the market up, making you think that, oh, maybe there's something good, maybe we're saved, maybe we're saved. The market's so, it looks great, it's gapping up. What that means is the market basically opens up higher than, uh, well, let's put on, uh, I don't know, I have no idea what to put on. I just can't hear this song. Yeah, I'll put on something nice, here you go. <laughs> this is my wife. It's so my wife, because when I go over, a lot of people ask me about my wife for some reason. I'm always showing pictures of my wife. It's one of my wife's favorite songs. Sing it, baby. So the market gapped up today, okay? I guess on, on, on I don't know why. I haven't read the news. I woke up at 9.27. 
Yes, I know if you're a professional trader, you should get up and read your newspapers and see what you want to do for the day. But I was coming in long. I came in long the FAS. I was coming in long the DXO. And I was coming in long the, uh, the dry ships. Okay? Stocks that were at... Okay, the DXO, we've already gone into it. It's... It tr I spoke to the Deutsche people. I'm waiting for a phone call back. Obviously, it doesn't trade crude as well as the futures would trade crude. But if you want to try to bet on where the, 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 the oil is going to be six months down the road, divided by this, half by that, double ETN, ETF, blah, blah, blah. If you think we're, oil will be higher, let's say November and December, and you want to give something a shot at two bucks, you might want to buy the DXO. There's a lot into it. You should read the prospectus. There's a lot that I don't know about it. The bottom line is, I saw it was an all-time low. I bought it at 185. Gapped up this morning at uh, 211, and I got out at 208. The FAS it was under five. I promised myself I'd buy it under five. We had a remarkable rally on Friday. It gapped up some more this morning. I'm out at 540, and now it's about 522. Now, what I was saying about playing the fade, the market gaps up, and you're, if you're crazy enough to think that we're just going to gap up and start going higher, remember, we're in a bear market and nothing is really that good. The only time the market's going to go up is when you see the market gap down and reverses and gets strong. You never want to buy, unless it's, unless it's really something extraordinary, and we gap up, and it's just, there's just no, there's no selling at the open, we just go straight higher. You know what? You sit and wait. Don't buy the gap. You always sit and wait to see what happens in that first five or ten minutes. And this was a perfect opportunity. I mean, when I saw Hig at eight bucks, why the hell Hig was about to go out of business on Friday? Now they're gapping it up a buck and a half. You had a short into that. You had a short into that move. That's why I say, Colt, play the fade. Wait, I'm talking to people in the chat room. Let me just say hi to you. How deep is your love? So, what was I saying? So, yeah, I got flagged, but of course they let me in. I did a couple of interviews with the guys that I wanted to day trade a rock star. My boy Trent from Global Futures talking about gold and oil, where we think it's going to go. Because, like I said, if you're, if you're in the camp where you think we're going to be, you know, buildings are going to come crumbling down, the financial world is just going to crumble, and America's had its best days. Gold, my friends. Gold and silver, actually. We were talking about silver a little bit also. But, uh... Why not just play the fade? You could have made a lot of money today, right? This is unbelievable. See, I'm making this video. Once again, it's costed me cash. But I'm here for you anyway. I don't... Well, yeah. They had the Met gapped up to 2250. What, 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 what's that? Unbelievable. So, I'm just happy I sold the open. So, I took my money and ran today. Think about uh, being hungover and uh, having OCD. My train of thought sometimes slips. What the hell was I just talking about? I don't even know I do what I was talking about. I'm just going to have a cup of coffee then. Listen to some Barry Gibb. Uh, the moral of the story. Oh, I met the guy from ONN. The Options News Network. Nice guy. You see him on television. Hopefully, he, I gave him a suck by a NASDAQ hat. Maybe he'll wear it on his show one day. And uh, no, if, I'm going to probably head back to the city now. So if you're going to be in the city, I might drop a few more suck by NASDAQ paraphernalia on the floor somewhere so if you're standing behind me you can pick something up because they're rare it's a rare commodity those suck by nasdaq t-shirts okay i put one on ebay went for 300 bucks of course that was me buying it for 300 bucks but uh it did go for 300 bucks my friends i was the only bidder but uh what are you gonna do but we're now hit the bid.net and i went oh i almost forgot i went to visit with the velez the velez team you guys know about these guys you see them all kind of a cult, once again, like the cool trade people. And the funny thing is Eric was involved. I remember Eric the Viking, the guy with the crazy hat from Cool Trade. It's funny how these 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 uh, trading groups, they form a community, which is what I want to do. But my community is more, oh, and that's what everybody's asked me. How do you make money? How do you do this? You have no advertising on your website. You charge nothing for your website. Why do you do it? I said, I do it because I want to get into heaven. Being a good Jew, when I do good deeds, I get mitzvahs. That means I'm blessed. So I so eventually something will come my way. I say, listen, I'm in it for the fame. I'm like, my website, like myself, is a struggling actor. And eventually something will happen where I get my break and all the pain and struggles that I went through will all be worth it. 
So right now we're keeping everything free. We're building a community, like I said, and we're having fun, aren't we? All right, I'm running over. I'll be back later. Welcome to the chat room if you're new, and you know, this is about us. It's about us. Come to my website, we're gonna hang out, and whatever, however, however money I make, goes back to the website now because we're gonna make some improvements and we're gonna have the greatest website on the earth and you're gonna tell people about it and we're gonna have this really nice community of people just wanting to help each other wanting to make money with no strings attached okay all right